Hi everybody, I thought that it would be a really fun week to do a weekly reading vlog. Okay, so today is um, April the 6th, right? 6th? 5th. Sorry, fifth, um, and it is about to be six o'clock in seven minutes. Um, I have had a busy, busy day so far. I have been up since seven and I have been doing nothing but doing things. Well, first, before I get into what I did today, I wanna to talk about what I'm currently reading. So this morning I started um, Act Your Age, Eve Brown by Tally Hibbert. I had to remember. I knew it wasn't Take a Hint, and I knew it wasn't Get a Life, <laughs> which is the other Brown Sister titles, um, Actor A.G. Brown by Tally Hibbert, and oh my gosh, I am in love. I am in love. I am like in the 50% mark right now. Whenever I've had a free moment, I've been listening to this book. When I've been walking, I've been listening to this book. I started it today, and I'm 50% done, and I want to finish it today. I don't know if I can, because I have a few other things to do today, um, but oh my word, I am in love. I am in love. This might be my favorite Brown Sister book. I don't know yet. I have to see when I finish it. I'd have to like reread Chloe Brown to like fully solidify whether or not which one's my favorite book, you know, out of the bunch, um, but this book right now, so far, even just 50% of the way through it, is my favorite book of 2021. Last year, Get a Life, Chloe Brown is my favorite book of the year. <laughs> so, who knows? Who knows? I'm in the minority where Get a Life, Chloe Brown is my favorite out of the bunch so far. So far, Danny Brown's my least favorite, but I know I'm in the minority there. Everybody loves Danny so much. I love her too. I love Danny and Zaf, but I don't know, I'm just connected to Chloe more because of us both having chronic illnesses and stuff. Um, but right now, Eve is freaking amazing. I love her. Um, if you don't know about this book, she basically um, has been a uh, kind of like a trust fund baby, I want to say. Like, she's basically grown up on her parents like trust fund money um and she's never really had a steady job she still lives with her parents she's 26 and then one day um her parents are sit her down and is like we're cutting you off until you're able to keep a steady job for a year and move out of the house and all that stuff and so she goes to go do that and she comes across this bed and breakfast who is trying to find a um a chef so she just walks in out of the blue with no resume in hand to see if she can get the job and then she meets jacob who is the um owner of the B&B. He is actually also autistic and so he's very particular in what he likes or that's what he says. He finds Eve to be very messy and not organized and he likes things to be clear, cut, organized, like um, just clean overall and he's very particular in what he likes and at first Eve is not what he likes <laughs> but uh, he this is very much a grumpy sunshine romance so he's the grump and she's the sunshine and it was really cute i love grumpy sunshine books so much uh so i'm adoring this book so much i'm loving it <laughs> um we'll see if i finish it by the end of the day i don't know yet though and then i am in my i'm currently actually reading two ebooks right now um one um, is a Ruby Dixon book called When She's Married, and this is a novella part of the Rizdiverse series. I'm trying to read all of Ruby Dixon's books in publication order, like going back and reading them in publication order because I've read a few of the newer ones. And this is the second book, a part of the Rizdiverse series. So basically each book is about, I think, a woman, a part of this planet. Um, it's kind of like a farm planet where like um, escaped convicts go and human women, because human women are like illegal in like places other than the Milky Way universe. <laughs> and so our heroine to be able to like keep her land safe and to keep herself safe, she has to get married. And so she like pretends to buy a slave from like the jail that's on the planet. And like, she's actually, when she buys him, she's like, I actually want you to be my husband, not my slave. Um, can you marry me? Um, so, so far, very interesting. They just um, got together for the first time. <laughs> it's only like 30 pages into the 70 page book. Um, so overall, I'm really enjoying it. It's a Ruby Dixon book. It's, it's fun to read to pass the time, you know? And then I'm also reading a book, I can't remember the author's name, but I think it's called Eric, and it's like a time travel Viking romance, y'all. I sometimes like to read this book while um, classes are about to start, or I'm getting ready on Zoom, or I'm waiting for Zoom to start, or there's a break in the Zoom, or if I've completed all of my work on Zoom, I'll pull this book up on my computer. Um, it's like 300 something pages though, but I'm very intrigued because I love time travel romances, and um, I, think I will like Viking romances. The only Viking romance that I've read I did not like 
um, but it, I didn't like the, I didn't not like the Viking part. It was other parts of the book that I didn't like. The first chapter of this book starts out with our heroine, um, being in this pat in the past, um, and she gets like sucked into the past. These Vikings have overcome the town that she is in when she time travels, and they're taking her away from um, the land that she knows. I forget the name. It's like a city. It starts with a C. Castellili, maybe. Where uh, if they he, they're taking her away, and a bunch of other people they've pillaged the city, like burned it to the ground, and are taking the people who have lived to their king or their ruler or whatever um, on the Viking ship. And so that's the first chapter and then it goes back in time to how, how our heroine learned about this land and how she learned how to time travel. Basically there's this tree in the woods that she found when she was like six maybe and when you touch it like it sucks you back in time. The same place but back in time when Vikings were there and everything. Um, and then she befriends two little kids there um, and they all grow up and be friends and everything. And um, that's where I'm at so far. I think she's maybe like 12 at this point. It's been kind of slow and like there's no romance at all so far, which I'm not necessarily enjoying, but if the romance does not pay off, like what's the point? Like I need romance in here. <laughs> if there's not romance in here, I'm gonna be kind of mad because the story's interesting. I only feel like it would pay off for me if the romance is fantastic and like all of this world building and all of this the past building like actually leads up to something, you know? So um, as what I did for today, I went to my young adult literature class. We discussed a little bit of The Outsiders by Essie Hinton and I finished that last weekend and I watched the movie with my mom. I rewatched it. That's her favorite book of all time. And so we watched the movie together. And so I had that class and then I had um, a little bit of a break before my Eastern European class, which is at 1.35. Had to turn in a paper that took me a while to do, um, but hopefully I get a good grade on that. And then I came home and I um, had my office hours for my job. I work for the university and then I, um, filmed my April TBR because I didn't have any videos to post um, this week because I went home last weekend to go see my parents for Easter weekend. And so I filmed my April TBR uh, and that's probably already out by now. And now we're here and I still have to go to the grocery store. I have to um, work out today and then I have to do one more assignment. I have to re just read an article. <sighs> still a bunch of stuff to do today. I'm trying to work out every single day with my, um, chronic illness, it's kind of hard to work out. I'm trying to do it more consistently. Um, and so I'm hoping that like this vlog will keep me more accountable, you know? And I can like check in whenever um, I work out every day because I need to. Um, it makes me feel good and it makes me more tired and it helps me with my insomnia. I find myself having, um, not having to stay up so late whenever I do work out. Something I do want to talk with y'all about is something. Um, so, I would love your recommendations for books, but I don't even know if anybody knows any of these recommendations, but I would love your recommendations for books about people, not just women, people in general, waiting for marriage because I'm kind of struggling at the moment. Not like in my beliefs because that is something I will never change my mind about. I'm having trouble in this day and age um, finding somebody who has the same beliefs as me or at least respects my beliefs and still wants to be with me. You know, if that makes sense. I don't want to go too much into it, but like something just happened with me and another person where, um, it kind of like just like made me not feel good, you know, like not feel good about this. Like I am fully going to be standing up for my beliefs and my values and that is something that I value and have valued my whole entire life. I have yet to find a person who, um, believes the same thing as me or values the same things as me or somebody who still wants to be with me even though I have that value in my life, you know? Um, it's just really hard in this day and age with um, the hookup culture. I think that's why I love romance books so much is because like a lot of the romances I read, like it's not really about that, you know? It's about finding love with somebody. That's not really... <laughs> the day and age we are in right now which stinks it's also just like really hard because like i've tried dating apps and stuff and i realized like dating apps just aren't for um people like me who um want what i want if that makes sense like i want a certain thing and i want somebody to respect me in that way and um it has not happened yet uh so i love your <laughs> either advice or recommendations because i have yet to read one or i maybe i have and i haven't remembered i think chasing cassandra 
by Lisa Kleypas was maybe one, but that's about it that I can remember off the top of my head. And I'd honestly love to see that. I'd love to see that in books because I want to feel seen or like, I want to feel like I'm not like wasting my time because I would hate to be a spinster old woman <laughs> with no prospects at all because of the time that we're in. It's just like, it sucks. And like, I want to read a book where I can connect to somebody and I have yet to feel that way in a romance book. I really would love your recommendations. Please, it'd be greatly appreciated. But um, I'm gonna go do my homework, the rest of my homework for the day and um, maybe go to the gym or directly after that or go to the grocery store, whichever one comes first. We will see, I also have to edit my vlog, not vlog, video. <laughs> so I'm gonna go do all those things. <laughs> Tuesday. It's actually Tuesday night. I just wanted to give a little bit of a reading check-in. Um, I had a very busy day today. The whole like school week is normally very busy for me. I'm only able to read like in between classes or like right before bed and so um my hair looks crazy right now. <laughs> um, I don't really like I I'm just busy all the time if that makes sense. Um, I don't really have like a set aside amount of a long set aside time of free time during the weekdays um i did work out today so yay me i went for an hour and a half um which is like my goal whenever i go now is an hour and a half an hour on the treadmill and 30 minutes on bike i just did a bunch of like school work today that i had to get done i had my classes today i also finished a book i finished when she's married by ruby dixon um, i'm gonna maybe give this one i don't know maybe three stars it's just it's not my favorite thing ever because they're so short like these novellas and like i don't get the same development that i do in one of the ice planet barbarian books where it's at least 100 pages you know um because this one is only 78 pages and so like they're like romantic feelings for one another like just like happen too fast for me i'm also the type of person where like i don't really find romance books where the couple like sleeps together and then they immediately love each other like that's not like my fantasy in life <laughs> and so um it's hard for me to love books like that if that makes sense um i have not read any more of eve brown i'm going to be reading it tomorrow when i am walking to class and hopefully i will finish it tomorrow i did make some headway into eric a Eric. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that. I have no idea. I don't remember the author. I think it's Joanna Bell. I could be possibly wrong. The cover's on the screen though. I got a lot of the, this done today um, in between like Zoom classes and waiting for classes to start and all that stuff. I'm kind of like intrigued, but I'm kind of also not. Um, I want to, I think I'm going to finish it because I want to know how it ends, but there's um, like time jumps or chapters are in different time periods. So one chapter will take place in the 21st century like before she like time traveled this present time in the 9th century so you have the 9th century and then you have 21st century and whenever she like goes to the, whenever the chapter is like titled 21st century it like goes back in time like her time to like when she was younger and how she grew up and her life before like the first chapter of the book where like she gets kidnapped by vikings and i don't really like those chapters like they serve no purpose like a them of her going and talking about her life before she was kidnapped by vikings like they serve no purpose for me at all and it was just really really they're really random the most previous chapter that took place in the 21st century i thought it was done i thought they were going to be done doing chapters in the 21st century after the time caught up with her like going to the village for in the first chapter if that makes sense like it's very confusing. I don't really know how to describe it, but like I thought we were done doing 21st century chapters and I guess we're not. And then this random chapter just popped up where like apparently she had a drinking problem and all of her problems stem from the friends that she made in this time period and la la. Uh, just 
I don't want those chapters. I just want the ones that take place in the 9th century. Because the one that takes place in the 9th century are actually, like, pretty interesting to me. Um, but I will say the, like, the main character, Eir, Eirik, um, he... He's like the leader of the Vikings, of the Viking clan. The author, I guess, just didn't want him to seem as gruff or as mean or as like put forward as I guess like normal Vikings are in history because like this one is very respectful, which is nice. I love respectful men, but he's also, it's just not like the character type, you know, that when you think of a Viking, like it's just, he doesn't have that character type for me to a point where I'm thinking like, is he also a time traveler because like men even in this century have a hard time like acting the way that he's acting right now <laughs> and like respecting her in that way when a time period when most men did not respect women that way so i don't know it kind of just feels like out of character for the time period in my opinion in all honesty i think i'm gonna finish it just to see how it ends and i might if there's any more 21st century chapters i'm probably gonna skip them because like they serve no purpose <laughs> like no purpose i am bored with all of them. There's no romance in any of them. None. I don't know if you can see, but my room is extremely messy behind me, so um, I'm gonna go clean up my room and watch some booktube. Y'all, be very proud of me. My, like, watch later playlist is down to the 20s, which has not ever probably been that low ever, and so I'm trying to get it even lower. Um... <laughs> because uh actually this isn't my watch later playlist like okay so youtube already has a watch later playlist like generated for you um but i made a watch today playlist in hopes of adding videos that were posted in that day to like watch all of the ones that were posted in that day and it accumulated and backed up and my watch today playlist is actually my watch later playlist and my watch later playlist is filled with videos made in december <laughs> last year um and i still want to watch them so if i ever like completely um i really want to like watch all of them combine my watch today playlist and then my watch later playlist i want to watch all of them so i can finally utilize the watch later playlist in the way that it's supposed to be used but if i complete my watch today playlist and i have nothing else to watch i will go back and watch those in my actual watch later playlist that might sound really confusing <laughs> sorry um so i'm gonna go clean my room it is very messy and there's stuff all over my bed and i can't get into bed right now oh i also forgot to say just also downloaded the next ruby dixon book that i have to read in publication order which is fire and is chaos which is the um next book in the fireblood dragon series i think that's the title of the series fireblood dragons i actually really enjoyed this series i've listened to all of them on audio unfortunately my uh libby like my audiobook service through Libby it does not have this audio specifically. It had all the other ones. It just doesn't have this one. And I canceled my Audible subscription um, because it was a lot of money and I am a broke college student. So um, I just got it off of Kindle Unlimited. Hopefully I'll be flying through that one. I don't know. It's just hard reading ebooks nowadays. Uh, like, I don't know. It's just hard for me. Um, like when I'm in my bed because like I just want to fall asleep. <laughs> but I have a horrible time falling asleep. It's like I want to fall asleep. But I also just can't and anyway so that's book number eight in the fire blood dragon series she actually literally I think earlier this week or last week came out with book number nine which the cover for that one is gorgeous gorgeous so maybe if I'm liking this one I may just jump into that one instead of reading the other ones in publication in order because like the fire blood dragon series has nothing to do with the Rizdiverse or like her other books if that makes sense like they don't correlate at all if I'm feeling this post-apocalyptic earth setting more than the Rizdiverse setting after I read Fire and His Chaos, I may just jump on to the next book um, because that cover is absolutely gorgeous. So that's all the reading updates that I have for today um, and I'll chat with you tomorrow. <laughs>
<laughs> did not mean to do that. Um, it just happened. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of really exhausted <laughs> at the moment. Uh, I ended up finishing, um, Act Your Age, Eve Brown. Why is it so hard for me to remember the beginning of that title? <laughs> I don't know. So yeah, I finished the book and I am most definitely 100% giving it five out of five stars. And so far it's my favorite book of the year. And again, I don't know if it's better than Chloe Brown. Man, did I love this book. I want to reread it again. Like right now I want to go listen to it all over again. If you didn't know, I do a, um, like a goal or a kind of like parameter for myself uh, to make sure that I'm not like overly spending money on books. Um, this year I have like, I'm on like a book budget to where I'm only allowing myself to buy like one book a month specifically. And there are obviously gonna be times where I maybe go on a little one book splurge here and there, um, but mainly I'm only allowing myself to purchase one physical book a month um, as to the end of every month. And so April's is definitely going to be this book. I need a physical copy to like complete my trilogy on my shelf and just because I love it it's my favorite book of the year so far I'm obsessed with it <laughs> I also started a new book which is called Alien Wanted by Julie S Julie K Cohen Julie K Cohen um this is an alien romance book <laughs> I don't know, I got in like the, I kind of wanted to like find more alien romances um, that were different that nobody else has heard about. And this one came out this year in February and I saw it on Kindle Unlimited, so I downloaded it. I'm not gonna lie, there's one thing that stood out to me and is the reason why I downloaded it. It's bad. Um, in the summary, it says that this alien has uh, two things down there, if you know what I'm saying. And um, yeah um but basically so far like our um heroine like earth now has been like um taken over by some g jerk evil aliens and her dad to um basically get money has like sold her to uh this mail order bride place because ever since the aliens took over like women have become like basically property to men um and so he sold his daughter to a mail order bride place uh alien mail order bride place she's like put up for auction to be sold and this guy uh like sell like buys her without like meeting her at first and then she goes to like the place with all the other where all the other women are and they're going to go meet the person that bought them and she says that he's been writing her letters like ever since then and he seems really nice and that's all she wants is she wants a husband who is nice to her and so uh but he doesn't show up like he doesn't show up to come pick her up from this auction and so our hero is the one that um like sees all this happening and like nobody's coming to come get her and he like kind of like feels sorry for her and he's also very attracted to her and so he like agrees to have her stay the night at his place and then the next day he'll bring her back to town to see if the guy who bought her to be his wife will show up and that's where i am right now i'm like 15 percent of the way into it they're about to go uh dr drive back to his house for the night so that they can stay there for the night something that is in this book that i know that a lot of people don't like i'm kind of indifferent to it it doesn't bug me all that much is like there's made up curse words in here um and i know that's a big pet peeve for a lot of people when it comes to alien or fantasy S alien i mean sci-fi and fantasy sorry <laughs> so that is in here just fair warning but i'm kind of indifferent to it i don't like it and i don't dislike it you know after this meeting i am hoping to film some tiktoks uh because i really want to i'm kind of in the mood to sometimes i'm in the mood sometimes i'm not um and i feel like a lot of my recommendation tiktoks get more views than my other ones that i make so i'm gonna make some recommendation tiktoks so i'm gonna do all those things and i'll chat with you later <laughs> Also, sorry if like the camera sometimes shakes when I'm filming. Like you're literally in between my blinds at the moment. I'm trying to get it to stop. Um, also, sorry if the lighting's a little weird. Am I very light things are right there. Also, my roommates are in the living room. So that's, if you can hear them, I'm very sorry. So it is currently 11.30 at night and Taylor Swift's new album came out. I'll talk to you about my reading updates tomorrow, but like, uh, I have to get up um, at 7 tomorrow, and so I'm going to go to bed very soon. But before I went to bed, I noticed that um, Taylor dropped her new album, which if you didn't know, she's my favorite artist ever. Um, I love her with my whole heart. Um, she makes me feel things no other singer ever has, like ever. Her songs bring me joy, and I will connect to them 
in ways like I can't possibly explain. I have to get up early again so um, her new album released and there are really five songs that are from like the vault like um, five songs that she wrote when Fearless was written but she didn't like end up putting them on the album I'm pretty sure and uh, the way that I listen to Taylor Swift albums now like the new ones is um, ever since Reputation came out I like sit completely in the dark and I don't do anything but listen to them because they're normally released at like 11.30 at night like my time or 11.30 my time no 11 o'clock my time sorry and so uh, I just sit in the dark at night and listen to it all the way through I don't have time to listen to the whole thing I just listen to the new ones that she didn't like redo and so I have listened to the five of them I know when I have found a song that re really connects to me that she's written because I will start crying <laughs> Um, that happened with um, New Year's Day. New Year's Day is, if not my favorite song, one of my favorite songs of all time. That was on Reputation. My favorite song from Lover is It's Nice to Have a Friend, which I know isn't everyone's favorite, but that one made me sob like a baby because I connected to that one so well. It was the same thing with New Year's Day. And Evermore, I love those albums, like every single song on them. Like, I love them, but like, I love them, but like, Evermore, maybe, maybe coney island did i don't know but those like songs didn't like get the same reaction as me as like new year's day and um it's nice to have a friend like happened to me like i didn't visibly horribly sob in my room i think i maybe did during the entirety of folklore <laughs> but um evermore for some reason maybe i was in like a funk or something but like i didn't cry at all which kind of like left a bad taste in my mouth and I called my friends afterward and I was like is something like wrong with me because like all these songs are amazing but I didn't cry for any of them <laughs> but I love the music in Evermore. This one we have two that have hit me. I think it's called We Were Happy. I think that's one of them and then Don't You. <sighs> Don't You. Oh my gosh. I just spent a little bit crying in my bed because that song. <laughs> I just, I think don't use, maybe I have to listen to them again because I've only um, listened to all of them once. Also, I like the, um, I think Mr. Mr. Perfectly something. I don't know the titles all that well because again, I've only listened to them once. Uh, I think that one is about Joe Jonas, if I'm not mistaken, when she dated Joe Jonas. Um, and I like the little, there was apparently like a little thing online um, where like Joe Jonas's wife like is talking about how she loves the song. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's about her husband. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed and then I'll update you on everything that I read tomorrow. Hello everyone. <laughs> I look a mess, but I got out of class like a couple minutes ago and like I'm just now like I laid down for a little bit when I got back and uh, it's flipping hot outside. <laughs> Um, so my makeup kind of like melted off. If you live in Texas, you know the pain of just like makeup melting off you. That's why I don't wear all that much. I will just do my eyebrows and do mascara because anything else melt off instantly. Like I went, can't wear eyeshadow because like there will be like a melting crease <laughs> in my eyeshadow if I go outside with eyeshadow on for too long of a time. Anyway, um, so I wanted to update you on what I've been reading and what has happened. So I didn't really update, I think for the past two days, just because um, I got some really bad news and I didn't feel like vlogging. I just felt it felt like being in my feels and being sad. I don't, I don't really wanna talk about it. <laughs> but um, I felt really in my feels, but um, hopefully everything will be okay. I'm praying everything will be okay. Anyway, um, I have completed, I think, two books since I've talked to you two or three I think I mentioned how I finished act your age Eve Brown right I talked about that right I think I did if I didn't it's my favorite book of the year favorite book of the year by far I am obsessed with it and then I need to get out my laptop because I don't remember oh I can't do that because our our freaking apartments out of Wi-Fi like our Wi-Fi di disappeared like it doesn't exist like our Wi-Fi is not a thing so I can't even go look it up even if I wanted to. Um, so I'll, I'll be guessing at the moment. <laughs> so yesterday I finished two 
books, two books, two books. Eirik by, I think it's Joanna Bell. I remember, I now know it's pronounced Eirik, not Eric, but it's weird, they only gave us a pronunciation at the end of the book. They didn't really tell us it at the beginning. Not in like a guide, like the heroine has to tell somebody um, like the name and she pronounces it and he's like, oh, do you mean Eric? She's like, no, I mean I, like spelled like your eyeball and then Rick. And I was like, why didn't they say that at the beginning of the book? Because I've been saying Eric this whole time. Anyway, that one I am giving 2.5 out of 5 stars, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, I don't remember. See, I have a horrible memory and I don't remember if I've talked about this book or not, like a lot. So basically, long story short, I love the idea of time travel romances. I love that. Um, I haven't read Outlander yet. I own Outlander. I have not read it yet, but I know that I'm going to love that just because I've read, I've read the show. I've watched the show and I'm obsessed with it. And I love the idea of a modern woman or a modern, modern character it can be a guy like time traveling into the past and falling in love with somebody who's in the past. And so our heroine does that with a Viking. A lot of the chapters, I think I talked about this. I'm like getting deja vu. Like talked about how like some of the chapters took place in modern day and then some of them took place in the ninth century like where she time traveled to and the chapters that take place in like the 21st century like are pointless like are literally pointless I'm, have i already talked to you about this book i'm like second guessing myself anyway you can go check out my like rating on goodreads because like, there's like a i wrote quite a, a bunch on there and um another thing that really bugs me is like we were like told a lot of stuff instead of like shown it if that makes sense like all of a sudden our heroine loves the hero well how did that happen the only time that the only scenes that we get of them are of them in bed together like that's the only thing like we don't see any romance between the two or them doing anything romantic or sweet and even those like bed scenes together they weren't even like that enlightening at all to like them as characters or them as a couple if that makes sense and so like ugh. I wanted to like this and it was just 310 pages wasted like this sh also should not have been that long should not have been that long i say the author should have just chucked all those chapters that took place in the 21st century i skimmed once the half point halfway point happened i just started skimming all of the ones that took place in the 21st century and i understood everything that happened in the book and then i finished that alien book i don't remember the name of it um, but the picture's up and I can't look it up because there's no internet right now. <laughs> I think I gave it 3.75 stars on Goodreads. It just, it was good and entertaining and like it was quite interesting with some certain things going on in there. Um, I don't know why a bunch of alien books like take place on a farm planet. Like that's like a consistent thing and I don't get why. Our hero works on a farm. He rescues that girl. I think I talked about it. Some things happened with like the villain that like I just didn't, I didn't care about the conflict. I didn't really care. The only thing going for it was like the, you know, the good times. But uh, other than that, like I was just like kind of like bored with the overall story. Who knows, other people may really like it. I've just read way better alien romance books in my opinion. Something else that like kind of like rubbed me the wrong way is there's the classic horrible to me horrible like trope in this book about like the infertility issue and then spoiler if you want to know which i don't think you do but like the whole infertility thing of like oh i think i'm infertile the whole entire book and at the end we realize that i'm not actually infertile why did that even have to be in the book like that did not have to be in the book like it just made it worse by you putting that in there i don't like when authors put the infertility thing in their book and then they just like discredit it at the end that i feel like that's so demeaning for like women who actually have to go through that personally i have not had to go through that but i know many of my friends have dealt with stuff like that and i know that it really rubs them the wrong way and so it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth whenever i read something like that if that makes sense so yeah if that wasn't in the book maybe would have given it that 0.25 star back then i started wicked abyss by Cressley cole which is the last book currently out right now in the Immortals After Dark series, book number 17, 17. I am already really liking this book. <laughs> so I believe this one is about like a fae and her relationship with like the demon king, like a demon king. Sorry to change the angle, it was bugging me. So basically our heroine is like an exiled like fae um, creature. In exile, she had to go to the mortal realm is it like tilted? I'm sorry. Hopefully that's better. I'm sorry if it's been tilted this whole time. She has to go to the mortal realm and she's like a fey princess actually. And so to like hide herself, she hides herself in plain sight by being like a Disney princess. By the way, Cressley Cole was kind of like 
inaccurate on the Disney stuff a little bit just because I'm a Disney fanatic and I know things about Disney um, not as much as other people but I know some things and there's this whole scene at the beginning about her getting locked out of work while she's in her princess gown and everything and get up and you're not allowed to dress in your outfit like or come to Disney World or Disneyland like in your outfit. You're not allowed to walk in in your outfit. You have to get dressed in the locker rooms there if you work there. Like I know that. Like I feel like everybody knows that. <laughs> Is that not a thing everybody knows? Like you're not allowed to like walk onto Disney property if you are a like one of the characters. Like you're not allowed to walk in your costume into like you're not allowed to do that so she was like locked out i can already tell this is gonna be pretty angsty pretty amazing because turns out our heroine is actually like a reincarnated woman like she's like i think like so our hero i i don't remember their names i don't have the book physically on me so i can't check but our hero he's like the demon king and because he's become the demon king his brother was the demon king before him because he's ruling over hell like he's like growing or like becoming more demonic physically and it's so like he used to be like a regular looking guy and now since he's the king of like hell basically like he is now having red skin claws basically looks like like the typical demon from hell and before i think like 200 years ago like he had a mate every person in the series has their own mate so basically our hero met our heroine when he was 16 and she was 24 but that was 200 years ago and so she has now since been reincarnated into this woman who doesn't know that she's a reincarnation and our hero is wants to her wants to find her because he has been like notified that she exists again because she wronged him in her first life that she knew him like she wronged him she betrayed him so he wants revenge but she has no idea who this guy is like at all and so i am super interested i'm gonna be really sad when i finish this because i just i love this series with every fiber of my being and i want all of them so badly for my collection and, like this is just a recipe for an amazing time i can already tell and i'm only an hour into the 14 hour 12 hour audiobook and then for the rest of the day i just plan on cleaning my room, filming some stuff. I can't really watch booktube all that much because the internet is out currently. It doesn't exist right now. But y'all, give me a round of applause. Last night I was able to get my watch like today playlist that I was talking about down to the single digits. Single digits, y'all. Like I am very proud of myself. <laughs> but if the internet would kick back on, I could maybe get it down to zero today, but I don't really know. Um, but I have plans later tonight. Um, but before that, I've got to get some filming done because I do not have a video ready for tomorrow. And I plan on posting hopefully my March wrap up. So, like, I could do that and also film my March ebook haul. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. I know I look a little flushed right now. I don't know why. I've been flushed like this for a while and I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna wrap up the reading vlog, and so I'm gonna talk about what I read this week. The first book that I ended up completing, When She's Married by Ruby Dixon, and I think I just gave this uh, three stars. This was an alien romance book, um, marriage of convenience kind of thing. And then I read Actor H. Eve Brown by Telly Hibbert. I gave that book five stars. It is my favorite book of the year so far. I am obsessed. Like, I am so obsessed with it. If you have not read The Brown Sisters, like, by Telly Hibbert, you need to read them. Like, if you don't know what to read when it comes to romance, like, and if you want to read romance books that are absolutely amazing, you need to read these books. Like, they are some of the best romance books I've ever read in my life. Like, I love them so much. Please pick them up. Then I read Irik by Joanna Bell, which I believe I gave 2.5 out of 5 stars. Time travel romance, not really my thing. I don't think executed all that well. Please leave your time travel romance recommendations down below for me so I can substitute it for this one. <laughs> and then I read... Alien Wanted by Julie Cohen and I all, I gave this one 3.5 out of 5 stars I'm pretty sure or 3.75 I don't remember um again horrible memory here this is an alien romance that takes place on a farm and our heroine is Amiel Orderbright now we're going to talk about the books that I have started 
or that I've read and I haven't updated you on yet. So the book, two books I completed and I haven't talked to you about them yet. Um, we have Wicked Abyss by Cressley Cole, which is book number 17 in the Immortals After Dark series. And it is the last book that's currently out. And so I've completed the series. Oh my gosh. Y'all, this book was amazing. One of the best books in the series, in my opinion. Amazing. Basically, it's kind of like the ruler of hell. I, I can't pronounce their names ever. Um, basically, the ruler of hell, his reincarnation relationship with our heroine, who is a fey princess. It's very Hades and Persephone-esque because he takes her down to the un underworld. It's not really called the underworld. I don't remember what it is, but it's basically the hell dimension. Um, and he brings her there. And she's basically like kidnapped and has to stay there. But unlike Persephone, she's not allowed to leave. Like Persephone gets to leave at periods of time. She cannot. It's like the story about how this land like has destined her to be their queen. And like the land like pops up with little gifts for her and the castle brings her things and appears like it's, it's so good. And like the romance is so good because he is like, because he's the ruler of hell now, his brother was the ruler of hell or this demon dimension, whatever. If you are the ruler of this dimension, like you're gonna take on demonic, demonic, sorry, demonic qualities in your appearance. And so your skin will start to turn red, claws, horns, wings, like you'll look basically like the, the devil. And that's like basically your curse for being the ruler of this dimension. He thinks that no one would ever like love him because of his, his appearance now. And he wishes he was his, how he looked before he was the ruler because he was like basically a ladies man and everyone thought he was the most beautiful man in existence. And our heroine is like, I find you super attractive to look at. What are you talking about? And <laughs> he learns to love himself too. Oh, this book is like amazing. I want to go reread it right now. You could read this on its own. Like it barely has any correlation whatsoever to do with the other books. Obviously, if you're a, the type of person like me who likes to read books in order, I rarely read books out of order. I sometimes do, but very rarely. Um, but if you're not like me and you don't really care, um, it's kind of like reading a historical romance, not in order if that makes sense like some people they just pop in at any time during a historical romance companion series this is basically the same thing where you'll see you'll notice there are some side characters from the series that pop up in here basically for a split second but they're not essential to the plot like at all so you might get some context as to some of the side characters that are barely in there but you can just read it on its own because it is so good please read this, this is one of my favorite paranormal romances ever like oh my gosh this one and i think demon from the dark might be my two favorite i have to go back and read them i kind of maybe want to do a rank video please let me know if you want to watch i've never done a tier ranking video what if i did a tier ranking video for the immortals after dark series because that would be so good <laughs> i think i don't know i've never done one before let me know and then i also read and finished my required read for my young adult literature class, which was The Crossover by Kwame Alexander. I had no idea that this book like um, was written in, in verse. Um, very cool, I can't really hold up the book. <laughs> I'm not coordinated, um, but it's written in verse. And so if you've read the book, um, The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, like that's basically kind of like this. Very neat, super cool. The audiobook is only two hours and the audiobook is amazing. So basically in this book, um, our uh, main character is Josh and he and his twin brother play basketball. And this is a story of like, kind of like his world, not like falling apart, but like his life is changing in some drastic ways. His twin, his 13 year old twin just got a girlfriend. His father's going through some health issues and all he wants to do is play basketball. I'm not a basketball fan and you don't need to be a basketball fan to read this. It's just a beautiful story about 13 year old boy and oh my gosh it was so good i loved this my only um issue about it because i'm not going to give this five stars josh is going through some things in here and he has some pent-up feelings he has this nickname that he absolutely like he does not like his nickname he's like struggling to try to tell people that he's not comfortable with them calling him that anymore um and just other things that like he's not okay with and that he needs to voice like he needs to voice hey dude you're spending more time with your girlfriend than me and i feel kind of left out or stuff like that like there are some things that is bothering him and he's it's being like pent up in him there's at one point he like is his breaking point and he like i don't want to like say what happened because it's gonna be a spoiler but like something happens to like he finally lets loose and kind of a a little bit of a violent way he never voices like what he's feeling like he never like says it he never says what's bothering him and i feel like that would have been so much better if that was incorporated into the book if that makes sense but overall this book 
was really good. It's won many awards, which are totally well deserved and I uh, just wrote my reading response for it on uh, my eCampus thing for my class. So, and then I started two books. Um, first, I started my European history required read for the last book of the semester. We have The Door by Magda Sasbo. It's being washed out right now. Um, but uh, this is just a book for my Eastern European class. I just literally read the first chapter, which was three pages. I got the audiobook off of Audible because um, I think it's an Audible original or only available on Audible. I'm not sure. But this is originally Hungarian, so it's a translated work. Um, and I have no idea what this is about. No idea. But the narrator so far is really good. And then I also started Fire and His Chaos by Ruby Dixon, the eighth book in the Fireblood Dragon series. I am, I guess, just super unobservant and I can't tell that the character on the front cover is an amputee. Like, did y'all just know that? And like, I am just blind and just did not notice that our heroine on the front cover is an amputee. I, she does not have a hand. Like, I, I don't know, my brain just doesn't work. <laughs> I didn't see that. <laughs> this series is basically a post-apocalyptic world where alien dragons have like uh, one day like on earth like portals open up in the sky from a different dimension and, or a different planet. Dragons come flying out and basically decimate the whole world except for a few camps here and there and so this takes place years later. Here are the survivors on earth, the human survivors, and there's still dragons flying around. Those dragons are actually dragon shifters so they can shift into humanoid beings and then they have mates and everything and so I assume that our heroine is going to be a dragon's mate. We have not met the dragon in question yet. Whenever the dragons first like came through the rift in the earth she was in a huge accident and that left her having to have her arm amputated and she has a brutally scarred face. So I assume that's going to be playing into the book because uh, like her appearances, like her her thinking about herself in that way, just because um, she's already said many times, we're on chapter three, how she's not worried about any of the men in the camp, like, like, getting with her because she's so ugly. She's like, oh, they're not gonna get with me. I know that I'm really ugly, um, which, girl. Anyway, um, so I'm very excited. I'm very intrigued about this book and I feel like it has the recipe to be one of my favorites in the series, so I'm very excited. For all that I did today was I um, was doing some homework and all that stuff. Yesterday, I spent the whole day doing homework and I did this, where where is it, where is it? Okay, I found it. So I spent all day working on my notebook. So if you didn't know this notebook, I think I've talked about it in my Vlogmas videos, but I started basically a recommendation journal for my recommendation videos. I love making romance recommendation videos. So I made this journal and if you like making recommendation videos, I totally recommend that you make this too because I love my Goodreads shelves. I have like 200 maybe Goodreads shelves specifically for specific romance tropes. So, but it can be hard at times to remember what are books that I've already put in a trope video if I wanna make a trope video like part two or something. So I've already made, for example, an age gap romance recommendation video. And what if I wanted to make a part two? I have to go and look at my Goodreads and remember and look back at my old video. Which one have I talked about? Which one I haven't? And so I made this notebook for myself. And also I only talk about 10 books in each recommendation video that I do. So basically here are like the things that I do. So this is the age gap romance racks that I've already made this on my channel. I've already made the ones that have a little color thing in the corner. Um, and so I list 10 of them and then I just go through and I do all of the tropes, but not all of them are filled in. Like look, best friends, siblings, I only have six. And then there's things like there's the alien wreck one that I've already done. And so I've been struggling to find like, oh, what tropes should I do next? And so all the ones that have tabbies on them, I have 10 books for that I can make videos for. And I had no idea. Like I have all of these that I have at least 10 books to talk about. Um, so like, for example, there's, I have a big city romance ready, books with pets. Oh, you know what? Here, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna tell you some of the ones that I have like completed a 10 list for and leave down below which one you want to um, watch the most because I haven't filmed one for um, later on in the month. My royalty romance one is coming up next week. So be prepared for that. But we have Big City Romance, Book with Pets is ready. We have Arranged Marriage ready, Brooding Heroes. Childhood crush romance, college romance, fake dating slash marriage, 
We have funny romances. We have hate to love, historicals, LGBTQ+, married romances where the couple's already married, paranormal romances, romance series that I need to continue. I think that's just gonna be a video on itself because that's not like a trope basically. Um, then we have plus size rap, uh, romances that involve PTSD, sweet heroes, hate to love part two. I already have two hate to loves filled out so maybe that needs to be one. Um, to do. I also have historicals part two, more historical romances, Kindle Unlimited recommendations, and disability representation part three. Um, so those are the ones that I have completed lists for. But like, for example, like this one, some of them aren't filled out like all the way, like Insta Lust. Like I only have two on here. Like I need to read more. And that shows me also like in these lists, if I want to make a video really badly, for example, if I really want to um, read a book that has meat representation in it. I'm not gonna show you them because I wanna make the video. Um, but I have noticed if I really wanna make a mute rep video, I need to find two more books that are amazing to put on this list. Like it already like tells me, okay, I need to read two more. Yeah, I have been adoring this. If you like making list recommendation videos, I totally recommend doing a journal like this. It was actually so much fun to do. <laughs> um, and then I finished making some bookish recommendation TikToks that I've been loving. I learned today, I'm so proud of myself. I've been loving the TikTok rec videos where like, let me show you. Like the, some of you probably aren't on TikTok, but there are some where the transitions of them are like, ooh, I'm gonna flip the book pages and everything. Like that's the transition is flipping the book pages. And I've never been able to do that without it looking horrible. And so I made one today that looks so good. It looks so good, like it looks good. And so I'm really excited. This book is probably gonna be on that list, not gonna lie. I've realized like my method to making TikToks now is like, I like having um, my, if you also, if you're not following my TikTok, it's basic, it's just, it's just my YouTube channel name, Avery Loves Books. Um, but I'm, I'm also really close to 5,000 followers on TikTok also. Go follow me on there if you haven't yet, please. I have learned like a method if you like making TikToks and if you like yourself being in the TikTok, because I like being in the TikTok at the beginning and then I show the rec video, Rex that I have um, is whenever I have a filming day, like the other day I had a filming day, um, which was the video you just saw, I think last video, which was my March wrap up, I had a filming day. And so I will pick out songs that correlate with the recommendation video that I'm doing. Like for example, my royalty romance TikTok, I found a song that involves the word like queen in the title. So I use that one. And so I film myself as like the introduction for it, where the title page, title page, like the title of it will go like royalty romances where I'm in the frame and I'm like mouthing the words and then it'll cut off and then I will show all of my recommendations one by one, but I won't be in the frame for those. And so I just leave those to film later because I don't need to be in them. I don't need to look good. So I'll just film the beginning of like five TikToks at once and then be done. And then I'll find time later on in the week to film the rest of them, if that makes sense. Like the rest of the TikTok, which I found to be really good, really good for me. I just finished all of those and it didn't take me that long at all. That, that was my week. Um, I haven't made a weekly reading vlog in quite a while and it was honestly really fun. Um, and so yeah, uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.